Hey, are you forgetting something? <laughs> I know when you get to be my age, uh, you always feel like you're forgetting something. There's something that I forgot to do. I should have put it on my to-do list and I didn't. Yesterday, I walked into the garage and I stood there in the middle of the garage for probably a solid minute. What did I come in here for? <laughs> I never could remember. Anyway, uh, we all need more memory or maybe better memory from time to time. Other than a couple of friends of mine who have photographic memories, I think I hate them, uh, then we all need some more memory. Now, of course, we're not talking about human memory here. We're talking about physical memory and or, in this case, virtual memory. And of course, I'm really talking about virtual machine memory, not virtual memory. That's kind of another topic. So how does all this work out? You know how things go on a physical level, right? We have uh, maybe on this machine I'm recording from right now, uh, I have 64 gigabytes uh, and uh, I don't have to use all of that all the time, right? A lot of it will go to virtual machines that I run. So I might have a, you know, Hyper-V running here with virtual machines running in it. And I've got this virtual machine and this one and, and this one. And maybe this is a server down here and maybe it needs, oh, let's say eight gigabytes. Maybe this one's just a Windows 10 computer. It needs two gigabytes. And this one over here maybe is a Linux machine uh, that maybe we decide it needs two gigabytes as well. Well, does that mean, what does that add up to, 12? So does that mean that this over here is actually 52 gigabytes that, that are left? And how does that get balanced out? This machine over here is also going to have a paging file, which is substituting memory in hard disk paging instead. Uh, I think you may already be familiar with that. The virtual machines here also, though, even inside of this, for example, this server down here that's using eight gigabytes, what if it has an application, a combination of applications and different things that it's doing and data that's processing, where now, oh no, it needs 10 gigabytes total, but I only gave it eight. Now what? Well, a couple of different things. Number one, it can use paging on its own within that, but the virtual machine management here, actually Hyper-V itself, can also allocate memory in various ways. And one of the ways that it can do that is through something called dynamic memory. Now, in addition to that, there are other things that happen when a computer starts up as a virtual machine. Actually, this is true of physical machines as well as virtual machines. And it's mostly true of Windows, but it probably also applies to most other operating systems. And that is, uh, it uses more memory during the full startup process. And then at, when it's, once it's at rest, it usually calms down. So these virtual machines here, let's say these two gigabyte ones, Let's say if this is a Windows 10 or 11 machine, uh, it might use, you know, one and a half or two gigabytes during the startup. I don't really know the exact amount that it's going to use. They're all going to be different depending upon their load. But after a while, it might go way up here to two gigabytes, you know, two <laughs> gigabytes. And then after, you know, 10 minutes or so, it might come back down to, say, one gigabyte. That's really using at rest, so to speak. This becomes a factor when you're working with VDI or virtual, virtual desktops, okay? Uh, this would be where, so for example, someone's sitting at home. Let's say this is their home. I don't know why I'm writing, writing a triangle for someone's home and I'm in the way. But this is their home down here and they're working on their, maybe it's an old crusty laptop computer sitting on their couch because everybody works from home these days or a lot of people do anyway. That's not a window. It's supposed to be a laptop. You know, there's the keys on it and everything. Anyway, they're working from here and it's really just enough to get started. It's a bring your own device kind of a situation, but they need to be able to use this virtual machine right here. And the, that again would be the case if I'm using VDI, uh, which by the way stands for Virtual Desk Infrastructure. And if you're using something like that, you probably have a bunch of other desktop computers here. These are all, let's say, VDI machines that other users will be connecting to throughout the day. What's the advantage of a VDI? And we're not really talking about VDI per se here today on its own, but it does affect how memory gets used. So let's discuss it in a virtualization environment. The advantage of VDI is that these desktops will, will be, you know, corporate desktops that have, oh, I don't know, our wallpaper, our configuration, all of our apps, everything like that. That means that we don't have to have an administrator, <laughs> and this is the worst case, traveling to this person's house, configuring their personal desktop to have only exactly what we need. No, that would be very impractical. So instead, we configure all these VDI machines here, and it's the exact image of our corporate desktop that we want with all the apps that they, that they need and everything. So you, we might have quite an infrastructure where there's quite a few people connecting to these VDIs. As you can imagine, that's going to consume a lot of memory as the day goes by. And this gets to be more complex as these machines not only start, but also as they restart. 
Because again, it might have gone up to two gigabytes at a certain point, then it went down to one gigabyte, but then the user restarts the computer, so it again it has to go to this this cycle where it goes back up to two gigabytes and down to one or whatever. Well, as all of these machines start to consume memory, our physical memory in our host machine can start to go down, down, down until we get into kind of a memory depleted situation and maybe we're paging too much now and performance will really start to suffer. And there are even situations in which uh, maybe we have something going on where a lot of these machines are rebooting at once and all going through this memory spike where they have to consume all of their memory. We might even start to get error messages that there's insufficient memory to restart a computer. And even that is not really quite how it happens. What happens now in modern versions of uh, Hyper-V operating systems is that it's going to use something called smart paging. And smart paging only happens when virtual machines are being restarted and there's no physical memory available to give us this increase right here that we might need. And when it cannot be reclaimed from any of these other virtual machines and they don't, they don't have any memory to give up or to borrow from. Also be aware of the fact this only applies to actual restarts. If a machine is doing a cold start, a virtual machine is a cold start from an off position, then this is no longer a factor. It's just restarts. And to illustrate some of this, I've gone to my own Hyper-V here. Now this is running on a Windows 11 computer, but everything I'm going to show you here is going to be the same, whether it's on 11, Server 2008 R2, 2016, 2019, Server 2022, all of those are going to be the same, Windows 10. Uh, so what we can do here is we can right click there to go to settings. And if we go into memory right here, we can get a little bit more detail. And some of this is a little bit misleading. Let me talk to you about what's really going on here in terms of the memory allocation. Now, first of all, think about a physical machine, right? Let's say a physical machine had only two gigs of RAM. That's not very much these days, but let's say it had two gigabytes of RAM. Well, it's probably got a couple of memory modules in there. And the entire time that that machine is turned on and running and the operating system's going, it's got two gigabytes constantly. And it will play around with how much of that two gigabytes it actually needs for its operating system and applications. But you don't just rip out a memory module while the machine is powered and turned on in most cases, right? Unless you want to have a really bad day. Well, when it comes to a virtual machine in Hyper-V, it really actually has this two gigabytes that we see here during startup, this probably should be renamed not to just RAM, but to startup RAM. That's how much is allocated during startup. That will give it better performance during the startup process because most operating systems will require more RAM during startup. And then after a minute or two or a few minutes, it will kind of settle down and go back down again. So we start up, we, we go on the run up. As the computer boots up, you run up and you get up to this 2048 and it needs that for a few minutes. And then, again, in a VDI situation where you'll have, gosh, maybe dozens of machines that are really just idle. Nobody's connecting. Maybe it's not our business hours or whatever. They're available if somebody does need to connect to it in the middle of the night. They forgot to do something. But uh, it could be that they're just kind of sitting there. And in that case, they'll relinquish memory up to as little as 512 megabytes in this case. Now, that's operating system dependent as well. If Windows, if we're running Windows 11 VDIs, and I don't know what the minimum is, but let's say it only uh, need uh, can only go as low as 700 megabytes, then it won't go quite as low as this. But let's just, for the sake of argument, say that it goes all the way down to 512. Well, now as the as the user starts to use more memory, they come in in the morning, they log on, they uh, start up their VDI, then they got some applications running. Now they need this much memory. Now they have an issue that's come up and they need to restart their machine. Uh, on restart, again, it can use that uh, smart paging in order to uh, get memory that it might need and it'll create a temporary paging file. This is not the main big paging file that you use on the host operating system. This is a smart paging file that is temporarily created in low memory situations in order to get it back up to this 2048 if necessary to perform the full restart. And then while the operating system is running, if we have something that's extremely, you know, high demanding or whatever, we could increase up to, and that should be, I think that's, is that a terabyte? Yeah, a terabyte of memory there. Um, and of course, I've only got 64 gigs of physical RAM on this physical machine, so it would never be able to get quite that high. But at least in theory, it could go up to a terabyte if I had a terabyte's worth of RAM installed. And then we also have this value here, the memory buffer, and that works in coordination with the current needs of the uh, installed operating system and what its currently current memory requirements are. So it'll take what those needs are and it uses a factor to add in a 20% buffer to give it better performance. 
Then there's this value down here, the memory weight. This is a relative value. So uh, for example, if all of my machines were all smack dab in the middle here, then they would all be equally distributed, especially in a low memory situation. But if memory starts to get oversubscribed, then anything that's up higher, so for example, if this machine is a couple of notches higher, and all the other machines are right in the middle, then this one will start to have priority in terms of allocating memory. And if you want a little bit more detail about how much memory is available in your normal runtime environments, uh, you can use Performance Monitor there just as an FYI. There's a counter there, the Hyper-V Dynamic Memory Balancer, and specifically what you would look for here is this one, Available Memory for Balancing. Now, of course, I don't have much going on on mine, so I highlighted it's the black line you can see way up here at the top. Uh, so it's got pretty much 100% of the available memory uh, available for my virtual machines if needed. And then also, it's a little bit beyond our scope here, uh, but there's also this item right here. It's an article from Microsoft that you can refer to if you like. And this is for uh, virtual machine sizing guidelines. And because sometimes it's, it's a little bit relative in terms of determining how big of a server should you buy that's for your Hyper-V server, how many hosts can it support, uh, if you're using VDI, there, you're going to have to look for other data there as well. Uh, but this is at least a good starting point to determine what kind of load you can put onto your Hyper-V server. All right, that's it for memory. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.